Hello and welcome. As you can see, the bike is back with its big boy tank and that's probably how we'll leave it for now. But this week, as you've probably already seen from the thumbnail, unless this has gone really badly, we're gonna do something that I promised in the very first episode, and that is, we're gonna take off these pillion hangers because they're just so sort of completely redundant compared to what I want the rest of the bike to be because the exhaust isn't going to be mounted to them or it certainly isn't if we cut them off anyway and I'm thinking of this lug for that with a shorter exhaust and also I don't want a pillion and I don't want to have one in the future so I don't need the footrest mounting so each side we've got these big just completely redundant metal things and it was my intention to um you know cut these off take all this off and have to grind and smooth all these welds away which is obviously you know it's quite a lot of work not that that's a problem but i thought is there a way I can repurpose these and as is usual I saw something on eBay <laughs> and what I found was these little tool bags now these are very cheap ones they're not leather they're just vinyl they were 11 pounds each I think I got two of them and they've got these holes in the back and these straps inside and what they're kind of meant for is you can just strap them on and have little tool bags. Oh, I'll make it. That's interesting. All that. So basically, you can kind of just sort of um, fit them anywhere. Can't read the speeder if you do that. But anyway, eleven pounds, very cheap. No, I don't think. Oh, that's quite army style, isn't it? Ooh. Right, not get carried away. Anyway, so. These have got these mounting points on the back and they kind of, well, they don't kind of, they do. They line up with that um, tube measurement. So, I thought thought maybe we could mount these bags on the side actually I'll put a bit of tape around and we'll stand back a bit and we'll see what that looks like okay so I've just cable tied these on loosely to those bars the back part is still visible at the moment but don't, don't worry about that so if we come back that's that's the overall effect I'll see the exhaust isn't there so we can't imagine that but the exhaust will end sort of in line with the bottom of that bag remember from the episode where we tried out the exhaust and we'll actually we'll have a look at that in a sec. So let me just take that in. So obviously they can be usable or not or they can just be sort of decoration. I can put my sandwiches in I guess and there'd be one each side obviously. Obviously it doesn't conflict with the riding because the leg is um, over here. Hmm. I 
think I like it enough to go with it because I'm going to cut those things off anyway. So what I'd be looking at doing is I just need how much? 30 millimeters or so? Just over an inch. Yeah, about 25 mil an inch. They'll fasten round, and that'll be gone. Gone. If I grab that exhaust silencer, which we haven't seen for a little while, just do it with a clean. Oh yeah. Get my metal polish on this. So the exhaust, if you can remember, it's going to be, where's it going to be? There. Now I can't quite get back far enough to have a good look at that. But it completely misses it. Can't wait to get that exhaust on. Very soon. Because it's time to put this back together, really. Okay, so I'm happy enough to go ahead with that and cut these off. Right, so it's time for some hot tools. As you can see, there's super scientific measurement going on here. And what I'll do is... I'm just going to mark that with some tape. trying to get it so that the tape meets itself because if the tape meets itself with no creases that means it must be perpendicular to the tube and I'll use that as a cutting line then course until I cut it and then it just goes to a mess yeah I know it looks bizarre and ridiculous that's okay because we've been there before It's okay, it's okay, all good. I've left a little bit, we'll move to the top. Okay, that's sparking. 
the sparks are hitting the engine. Not that I'm worried about it to say, but the, the little grindings will go into the finish and then they'll rust. And wherever they're left, you'll get all these horrible little rust spots. So I'm just gonna find something to cover the engine. Some cotton casement. Like that. Lovely. Okay, right, just got to finish off this and off it comes. Irreversible change. That's a stick them on eBay. Helpful for someone. So you see that tape worked really well. It's got a nice parallel cut off the end. I'm just gonna get a file and clean these up a tiny bit. Nice thick steel. All done. Done. Now, where's that bag? So now, that bag can fit up on there. We can get really nice ones of these. I've seen for about 50 pounds, which are really soft leather. They look really vintage. They look really nice. But until I'm short, well, it's a bit late now, but um, these 11 pound ones will be just fine for now. And they kind of match the seat color, so whoopie do. There we go. So for as hot as that got, it didn't actually, um, the paint hasn't bubbled or anything. It's very clean, uh, very clean cut. Obviously you've got bare ends, which I put some paint on. And I also, so I knew this would be coming one day. I got these off Amazon. I think they're 10 for three pound or something. 
and you probably see them on bottom, bottom of chairs in your office or on tables and metal tubes. And I have no idea if these are the right size, but you just tell them the outer diameter. And it's got these sort of flexible grippy teeth. So we'll pop one in for now. They're certainly tight. Let me get my rubber mallet. Plastic mallet rather. These are great if you haven't got one. There we go. Just realised I have to get that out to put some paint. I was going to put some grease up there as well. There we are. Doesn't look like such a bodge now. Half a bodge. But not a total bodge. That's okay. That was pretty easy. Then I thought it would be. With that grinder, because they just cut everything. So more plugs. Just cut, cut the other side. Pop some black paint on. Mm -mm, grease. I've got spare ones, just in case I ruin this one now. So uh, let's do the other side quick, before I change my mind, but too late, obviously. Just something I noticed, which I thought I'd mention. I know we've talked a lot about all the wonderful design that goes into these bikes. And on the right-hand side, there's a strengthening web. No doubt, because that's where the exhaust system is. But on the other side, doesn't have it because there's no silencer. So good design everywhere, which makes me feel even worse about just hacking at it with an angle grinder, but not bad enough to stop. So let's go. Two more things to add to the graveyard of things that have come off the bike. Rear mid guard. <laughs> that bloody fuel cap. And a few more things, I'm sure. Look at all that weight I've saved. Or oh, I could just go on a diet, I guess. But no, this is the way. Right, while that paint is drying, over there, I thought I'd turn our attention again to this front body guard. And I know what we talked about before is the problem is this kind of scrambler-esque mud guard I made, which I do like. I know it's divisive, but I like it. Hasn't got the fork brace in, which is this sort of semi-rigid metal bracket that keeps the fork legs kind of acting and steering as one because that lives under there all the time and the original Meteor mudguard which is plastic and has no rigidity goes on top now just having a quick play if I take the one I made I could plop that on the top 
and those roddy sort of things to actually line up with those original holes so you can so it could sort of be have everything the fork brace and the rods so maybe maybe or maybe we could keep the original but maybe trim this a bit shorter to make it a bit more sort of aggressive looking although it's less practical but then I think we're well past practical and we can make some holes in it as well so I think that's what I'm going to do is have a play at adapting the original mudguard so let's get this on the workbench so there's our original meteor front mudguard as we just said this is a very weak plastic bit of kit and the fork brace is what makes it stronger and you've got these rubber spacers that push against the mudguard to make it all strong now we did try this on the bike I know a few weeks ago and it's all right well, of course it's all right it's designed for it but it does it doesn't really fit with the with the look for me because it's it's too long but I know that's very practical because uh, no one wants mud and water all at their engine so I'm going to cut it down although I would have the option of putting this detachable mudguard mudguard on the mudguard back on I haven't taken this off yet but it's nice and loose just three allen bolts course the next one isn't loose because I said it's loose one two three so there you go. there's the mud guard on the mud guard these nice little captive bolts all nicely put together, this Royal Enfield stuff. One, two, oh, it's on there, there it is. Now I think what I'll do to start is I'll make it as long on the back as it is on the front. Seems to make sense. Okay, so if I trim this off like that, it should match the front. Now, does that profile match that one? Yes. So I can use this. I put that there I shouldn't be able to use that as a template I stick that on the front yeah it's the same as the front look except it needs to carry on further along. So I'll just have to imagine that. Right, so let's cover this in tape so my pencil shows up. And draw around. no point scratching it for, um, for no reason if it can help it okay, 
just gonna pop the fork brace back in because um, it's gonna make it a lot more rigid. That's easily. I don't really want the blade to hit the desk, but um, I think we're all right. My fingers are uh, getting in the firing line there. Half and half. So that came off. Not a lot, but enough to make a difference, I think. Just looking on the underside of here, you can see that these are painted. This isn't just the color of the plastic. You can see where it's been. Um, painted, I think. Or it might just be dirty. No, it's paint, I'm sure of it. So obviously lots of the other models are gloss black, aren't they? Are they coloured? Are any Meteor mudguards coloured? Like the bike, or are they all black? Let's have a look at that. Clean line, isn't it? And does the fender extender still fit? Yeah, it's a tiny bit different, but I'm not planning to use it, so um, I've got the option. At least that look looks different from original now. So, um, more things from the pile of. Retiree. As an extender. Ooh. Now, you know what I'm going to say now. I miss those holes. I'm going to think about holes again. Obviously, if you remember on the original one, we used the special die that made the holes cone-shaped. But I don't think that's going to work on this plastic. 
Although, I've got a bit of scrap, haven't I? Let's try it out, let's try it out. Remember this tool, uh, flaring day. That was it, wasn't it? It's got a cone and a receiver, and you pass it through and tighten it up, and it should put a nice cone shape or flare on that hole. But it's a metal. I don't know what's going to happen with them. Plastic. Let's get the right Allen key. I did quite like the holes, and um, it'd be nice to carry them over. So basically, we just tighten this up. Ugh, don't feel very nice. Obviously, it's pulling into that plastic. So do it up, and then undo it. it done. All right, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Well, it's done that. Oh, is that good or is that bad? don't think it's I don't think it's great as you see I don't think it's, there's a lot of distortion and um, just tearing of the plastic so maybe we won't be using that die but will we make holes but maybe a bit bigger let's draw up a mock-up and we'll make some decisions then I've realized with I used this horrible big twist drill and I was rushing it a bit and I'll see that's torn the plastic so I use this nice cutting tool and make a 10 millimeter hole instead that might be a lot better Nice clean 10 millimeter hole. Let's use it a bit more respectfully. Much better. Here we go. So there's the rushed hack job. That hasn't gone very nicely at all. But that side is much cleaner. And that flare just gives it that sort of look that it was meant to be there rather than someone just drilled holes in your bike, he says. I'll go with that. So let's map out some holes in this. Obviously, we have to be careful now because I don't want a hole to be opposite this metal brace because then you sort of won't get that see through look. 
although if you noticed at all. Okay, more tape and measuring. So the scribe block is just an adjustable shoe and you can stick your pencil through and copy dimensions without it's one of those things I just wish I'd bought you know, years and years ago. It's so simple, but it saves so much time. Right, all happy? There we go, holes are in. Let's get flaring. I am, I think. I'm just gonna pop a tiny bit of oil on here. Just so that tool moves nicely and perhaps doesn't tear the plastic. Okay. Pretty good, pretty good. Let's show you that. There we go. There's a flare on the plastic. That's just a regular drilled hole. And that's with the flare on. Which is pretty much how it looked in the metal. Good. Good. I'm glad that happened like that. Let's do the rest. Check it out. Yeah. 
Here we go. Bullet holes. Oh, I just gotta rub the edge of that to smooth that. That's how that compares to the uh, original effort. Right, let's do the other side. There we go. Right, let's rub the back of that. And we'll try that on the bike. Just realized now that if this works, this is kind of the last time it would go on. Because I've managed to do it without damaging it. It can kind of stay like this, because I'm not going to paint it for a while yet. I want to get it working you know, as a, as a complete bike, just with the standard paint on. Although we've got to paint the rear med guard because obviously that's a mess. I'm going to take that off next. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and let's see how this works. That's a bit of a squeeze to get this in. And these gaiters don't help. Wow, is it the right way around? it looking Original bolts, original everything. Well, let's try and get these reflectors off as well. Right, what have we got? Have a look. Right. Well, it's a lot bigger than before, even though we've cut it down. It's definitely making the bike safer with that fork brace. I can always add that back on. You can even use that hole to mount it though. Okay, let's keep it with this till we get the bike running. And we'll see how it goes.
covet. There we go. All stumpy. Now, these are the straps they send with the bags. I don't know if I use these straps or not, because they look a bit cheap. Well, the whole thing was cheap, wasn't it? But, um, yeah, I'll probably just use fat zip ties, because he's going to be rubbish. But you never know, I'll give it a try just in case. on the inside for now because that's the only one I can see. Yeah, I think it's going to be cable ties because these are just going to come flying off. It's going to be the best thing for them. But they're holding it on for a sec, so that'll do for looking at. Let's put the side panel on. version one in place. Midgard version 20 in place. That's a bit of extra dimension to it, a bit of width. That one each side. Not too annoying. What do we think about that? Well, there we go. That's where I'm going to stop for this week. I enjoyed cutting them off. I don't know what you feel about that, but um, I think I like these little bags and the mud guard. I like the old mud guard, but that one is a, uh, it's going to make the bike stronger and safer. So, um, I'm happy about that and you know and like I always change something and don't get happy about it but I know it's a good thing and um, I'm happy to cut these off I know I put in the video there's one up on the headlight I'm just playing with that but you know that's always the first danger sign if I start playing with something that's meant for the other side really but you know they're quite cheap so maybe I'll have a look at that thanks very much again for watching and all the support I get in the comments. It um, <laughs> really motivates me to sort of get going on this. So uh, thanks very much. I read all the comments and it's brilliant to hear from all of you around the world. I'll have to get a globe with some stickers on from where all the comments come. 
I know a lot of you are watching in India and it's, it's great to have you watching. I really love the bikes Royal Enfield are making and it, it's brilliant to have them over here. And I, I know you enjoy them too. And everyone does. I don't think anyone buys Royal Enfield and doesn't enjoy it unless they're in a drag race. But um, they're just fabulous. So thanks for watching again. Please like and subscribe if you can, because that's really important apparently. Everyone says that, don't they? But um, if one of you likes it, then that's great. A thousand is better, but if just one of you likes it, I'm happy. So thanks very much. I'll see you next time. Oh, well, what am I doing next time? Well, I'm not gonna stop working this second. I'm gonna take this mud guard off and start rubbing it down to paint, which I don't really enjoy. I'm just gonna do it in satin black. I'll record anyway, and um, we'll try and make it exciting, but it's, it's just painting, and I don't enjoy painting very much. So, bye for now. We'll have a quick walk around, and I'll see you very soon. Thanks.